Hey, welcome to the Acoustic Shop YouTube channel. I am Jeremy, and this is John. It is me. And we're going to do something very fun. We're going to go through, it's a very requested thing, what is the difference between all the different levels of mandolins that Eastman makes? We're going to start with the 315 all the way up to the 815, tell you all the specs and differences, and then play them all so you guys can kind of see what to expect in any of these series. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. This was going to be really good, and I actually highly recommend you don't jump to the end of this because if you are following this, you're wanting to know what is the difference between a 300 series mandolin versus the eights um, and all the different ones in between, and we're going to cover all of them right now. I say we start with a slight, uh, quick decoder uh, ring of the the uh, numbering system from Eastman, Ooh, like which this. is very good. Uh, I think they do a very good job at, at kind of designating different models. So 300 series is kind of their beginner level right now that they have. And it comes in a 304, 305, 314, 315. Yep. Now, the difference between the fives at the end means it's an F style. So it's a four, no, sorry, the, the, the yeah, teens. The teens, the teens are F style. So a 14 and a 15 are both going to be an F style mandolin like these two. The 15 is going to have the F hole. Anything with a four is going to have an oval hole. Correct. So same thing with the 305s is going to be an A style mandolin with an F hole. And a 304 is going to be an oval hole A style. So the fours mean oval hole, the five, five means F holes. The zeros are the ops, if you will. Those are going to be an A, a style, style, and the teens are going to be an F style mandolin. But the designation between the hundreds is going to be the uh, appointments, the wood selections, and that's really where we're going to dive in on these yep. real quickly. We're going to stay with the F style in the F hole all models on yep. all these. But just know as a caveat that you can also get these options in an oval hole or A style, both options. Before I get into even the 300 series, let's actually talk about all the things that all mandolins from Eastman have in common. Every one of them has a radius fretboard. Every one of them has the uh, upgraded or bigger fret wire, uh, banjo fret wire, which lasts quite a bit longer. They all come with a bone nut instead of a plastic uh, nut. Ebony they adjustable. all come with a, a true ebony tr adjustable tr uh, bridge, uh, a cast tailpiece, and uh, also have a lifetime warranty and some sort of case, whether it's a gig bag or a hard shell, depending on the different levels. So those are things that every one of those all have and adjustable even, truss rod. And hand voiced in all of them, including the hand -built, uh, 300 hand series. Hand voiced, correct. So, and truly a hand carved instrument all the way through. So the 315 is your basic model. It has the classic stain look, which is this is their classic color. Um, does have a bound top. Uh, all of them also come with some sort of a scalloping of the fretboard. In this case, it's a cut-off scallop fretboard um, instead of the extension that you'll see on a lot of mandolins. And that's, again, to keep you from <laughs> tapping that as it goes. Um, so you do have that ivory binding. It's a satin finished mandolin, least expensive uh, finish to do. Also creates its own tonal characteristic, which we'll get into that as it goes. The weakest spot on the 300 series is the tuners. These are, and good, most of them have been actually fairly good, but there have been some that just, uh, you know, they're just not as good a long-term thing. The failure rate has been a little higher on those than yeah. it has on other ones, which I gotta say, Eastman with the lifetime warranty is we've replaced any of them that have come in. But that is one thing that they didn't upgrade, and it probably saved quite yeah. a bit of money in production to keep that price point down that on said, the mainland. That easily uh, swapped out. There is a, a pair of Grover tuners that almost everybody uh, who does these mandolins ends up swapping them out to. It's a drop-in tuner. You can uh, easily do that and not a problem at all. And the second thing would be this comes with a gig bag. Yes. It is a good quality gig bag. Uh, probably has about a three-quarter inch thick foam on it. Uh, really nice backpack straps with it. So a, a good quality. It's not just like the cloth that's just covering it. It's a, a padded I would feel safe with it if I'm not traveling a lot to just uh, put it away in the house or to take it to, to friends' houses. Um, but that is, you know, keep price down again, comes sure with a gig bag. Uh, the next level in... Hold on. Oh. For, to finish uh, this up, one more real quick thing. Tone wood's in this. You're going to have yeah, a right. spruce top with a maple sides and back. Uh, that said, it's going to be your most plain. There is some figuring on some of these. Well, we've had some, some that look gorgeous. That just have zero figuring at all. Uh, they're just going to be more of the plain maple uh, backs on these, not the highly figured and, and a sick spruce quality. top on it. Yes, sir. Um, so the next level going up from that uh, changes things up a bit. This one was a new entry. They uh, kind of skipped this number for a little while and then came up with a 400 series. 
And originally it came in a gold top and a black top. They've since done away with the, the gold uh, glitter top. And it's only in a black, which was a kind of a traditional thing. Gibson did that way back in the teens. I know my first flat iron was a black faced uh, mandolin. This also changed to mahogany back and sides though. So it's Sitka uh, spruce top, mahogany back and sides. It keeps just that uh, bound top, but then ad adds binding to the neck as well. Mm -hmm. The same cast tail piece, um, upgrade to the tuners. So a slight upgrade in quality of the tuners. And then also an upgrade to a hard shell case. This will have the three ply. Uh, it'll be the shape more like a guitar case, just shaped to the mandolin's uh, body. And this is also going to have its full lacquer finish. That's right, a gloss well. finish as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the major upgrades: you know, the lacquer finish, mahogany back and sides on this one, better tuners, and a hard shell case. And this one I think comes in at just over a thousand dollars at uh, ten fifty nine. Um, and that's at the time of making this video. It a can lot, change over time. A lot of add on there, by the way, for uh, $190 or roughly. Uh, like I said, tuners alone, that's uh, $100 probably. A case, case another sure, $80 yep. to $100, if not more. And, and then the finish. finish. So that's almost like the finish became free. Um, the so. difference is, and we went, we did a series on this uh, a video, of, which I'm not sure is out at the time, but uh, the mahogany is going to make a little tonal difference. It seems to be a little bit warmer, not quite as bright and. and Punchy maybe as the, the maple is, which is more traditional on uh, modern mandolins, but Gibson in the early teens, a lot of their mandolins were mahogany back and sides. So uh, a little slightly different tonal uh, quality to the mahogany, but a really good upgrade for not a lot of price from Eastman. So our next series here that we're going to talk about is the 500 series. Which is, it goes up by hundreds. Yeah, I can count by this hundreds. is 100 better than the last one. Um, this one, on the 500 series, you're going to see, maple, we're going to go back to maple backs and maple sides. Again, usually this is the standard, you're holding the standard 515. Yeah, so this, this um, is the, uh, the classic sunburst in the, the 515. This is the gloss finish. Um, there are three options that you can get in the 500 series. And we'll talk about those a little bit well, here. A little bit more in the fact that even in that one, there's two color That's variations true. in that particular one. It's a standard lacquer uh, instrument, has the classic sunburst, as well as the classic finish. Not to be confusing, but it is a little bit. It's still going to be the same um, lacquer, but just instead of having a sunburst, it's, it's going to be... a brown finish. Yeah. More uh, just a just straight, straight color. without the burst in it. Mm -hmm. um, a pretty good upgrade in the, the build quality. I think they use a little bit more select maple on the back and sides of it. Um, again, they, they take the binding all the way around the, uh, the neck, just like they did on the 400 series. Gone back to the uh, being able to see the wood in the top. Um, the upgraded tuners on these ones match the binding with the uh, ivory buttons on these, which I like a lot. Um, same case you're going to get on the 400 series. But let's talk about a couple of the three different options in this. The, uh, I guess the Comfort Contour would be the, the Next. less expensive uh, option there. I think that comes in, I'm looking at the thing. Just a little bit above, actually, that one. 13, okay. 13 59 for that one. Um, yeah, this one comes in, the classic is a 12 29 So this so, is like the next step for a little bit different option in the 500 series. It gives you the classic co uh, contour, or comfort contour, sorry, which is a beveled edge. It doesn't have binding, but um, it just kind of gives you this unique look and also comfortable. Um, they also did change to a different finish in this. They, uh, in the title, it'll say slash N. Originally, when this was built, they had come up with a whole new finish called a, a vintage nitro, and that's what the N stood for. Um, since then, nitro finishes have kind of starting to go away, especially in larger companies. It is a very toxic finish to spray, and a lot of different countries, as well as just even states, have kind of outlawed the use of spraying, that kind of stuff. So you will see probably less and less companies doing uh, nitrocellulose finishes, but this is based on that. This is a slight variation in a, in a lacquer, uh, water-based lacquer. It is thicker than the standard satin, mm -hmm. um, but it still has a light sheen. It is going to be like if you have your flat uh, finish on paint, you'll have your satin finish, which is what we had there. Then we have this semi-gloss, which I would say is this, all the way to the, the gloss, gloss finish that is on that mandolin. And this, I think I first came across this kind of uh, beveled edge on the Galton from Weber, and I think yeah. they might have come up before then, but that's the first time I saw that, where they actually take just the wood, go straight up to the edge, and then they just kind of bevel it really smoothly the whole way around, almost route it, and it just has this really nice feel and, and look to it. Um, again, probably saves a little bit of uh, effort as far as uh, binding. Binding is more of a decorative process, doesn't really add much to the instrument in general, but 
I think it's really a nice, and it is comfortable on your arm. It has just yeah. less of a sharp edge to it. Yeah, binding is, is truly is a, a decorative deal. Now, there is slight uh, advantage to having a binding in there in that it is a protective edge uh, to stop cracks if you were to bump it into something like that. So binding does have some value in there, but as far as what binding does, it is mostly decorative. And that's why on these, just right now, is only on the front to, again, save the back. They just take the wood right up to the edge. Um, and then the last option you get in this would be a, they have their, their varnish, but it's an antique varnish. They're using their kind of violin varnish. If you guys want to see a video on this, we did a comparison between the 500 series, just showing each of the diff different models that you can get in the 500 series. But the, the, uh, the varnish one, I think, comes in a little bit more expensive. The varnish is at $1,419, so just a little bit over $1,400 for that one. And it has the varnish we talked about in detail a little on that video. It lets the, the wood, I think, uh, resonate just a little bit more. It's less uh, constrictive than a full um, gloss finish is. This is somewhere in between the two. The hand rub varnish, I think, has the most resonance, especially in that chop when I was playing mm -hmm. that one. It really just booms out there. So three major options and then a couple different uh, finish color options you can get on these in the 500 series. Well, now, Jerry, we get into the 600 series, bringing in the 615, um, again, because it's F style with the F holes. We discussed that. And 100 better than the last and 100 one. 100 better than the last one. They did have a major change in the 600 series uh, about three or four years ago, um, but the main premise stays the same, which is a performance ready uh, instrument. Originally, just having a K and K pickup installed. Uh, this one will have a factory installed pickup. But then they I added. I think had a blue one at the time too. That was, was the 815. Oh, was it? But close. <laughs> You're close. Uh, those are the PGEs That's from right. 815. But uh, what they did to take from the PG series with performance gear was the uh, ebony fretboard or finger rest, which is right here, um, which is really nice, especially if you're one of those players that loves to have that. It's a very unobtrusive one, just stays pretty out of the way, well. and looks very attractive, especially being that it is made out of ebony. Um, I really do like that. Still keeps the K&K &K pickup. They also upgraded it to block inlays instead of uh, not block inlays. It's reminiscent to the uh, Sam Bush model Gibson that I have, which yes. was modeled after, I think, a a, I can't remember which model that was. It's an F5 from the, I think, 32 or 34, something like that. Um, but yes, it's a, a very cool uh, mandolin. Now you got into a fully bound instrument right here. Everywhere. Everything and it's is bound. bound in the back. It is bound in the top, uh, the fretboard, headstock, everywhere. Now it does have less of purfling. It only has a one single black line of ebony that falls in purfling on the outsides. It does have more on the front side, but on the sides and up the uh Yes, the, the headstock. fretboard and the headstock, uh, less so. Comes in two colors here. Now, uh, you can get this now in this classic co color, which is different, even though they still call it classic, slightly different than the classic a color more that they use in the 300 series and the 515. It's a little more red. Um, but it also comes in the new Gold Burst, which is really cool. That's a, uh, a kind of homage to the Gold Burst Les, T Les Pauls. Uh, very, very popular color uh, that they got really good at doing. So that kind of gives you a unique look as well. So I'd like, say the biggest upgrade to this, obviously the pickup, that's a normally a $120 pickup plus the install. So you're looking at a couple hundred dollars there. Does this go up to the, it does go up to the, uh, the oblong rectangle. Case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so more of the violin style hard shell case. So you, you go to a five ply case, a little stronger, but it also has the cloth uh, exterior to it, extra pockets, extra room. Um, the case that I prefer actually from Eastman, it's, it's my favorite. It's a very, very, and, and it also has the, um, uh, what do they call that? It's a shock absorbing system. It floats, your mandolin actually floats in the case. Yep, so, so. a pretty good upgrade in the case as well. So uh, I think especially for the performer that wanted to already have a pickup installed in there, a very good option. That's the pickup I've used on my mandolins for uh, long before we had a music store where we were out touring. Um, this one comes at 1659, which is you know not a big jump from the, the last series, and you're getting quite a few upgrades with it. So uh, they do jump a number here. We normally go in 100 series. This I'm betting up, at some point there was. They may fill in that, or they may fill in that gap later on. But right now we jump up to the 800 series, which is the mandolin I play almost primarily in the store. That's what I teach with. I have the 800 V, which is the varnish, but the 815. This is going to be just their standard uh, gloss finish. But the big upgrade in the 800 series goes from a Sitka spruce top that were on all the mainlands up to this point. Now we go into an Adirondack or red spruce top. Right. So you're getting a pretty big upgrade right there. I find that the Adirondack spruce just is a little bit, uh, you can play it harder without it kind of compressing and, and it, it keeps up with whatever volume you're putting through it. 
gotcha. um, very responsive, quick response to it. So I think that's a pretty big upgrade right there. And then they do the binding all the way around, but they also do the more classic or, or vintage uh, fretboard extension that is scooped. So that's the way I you know, prefer it. The, the original Gibsons would have that fretboard that goes all the way out and just fretted the entire way. And maybe back in the mandolin orchestras, they used a few of those frets. I think it was mostly decorative, but you also hear a lot of that clicking okay, anytime you play, at least when I play, I definitely do that. So I prefer the scooped extension like that, which gives a little bit more of a traditional look. And they also add the, the really cool flower pot yeah. onto this. It's I like the design of the Eastman flower pot. It's not just a flower, it has the pot, and it almost looks like some sort of smoke or uh, Or uh, weird looking vine plant, it. but it's in the shape of an E, which uh, is Eastman. Uh, so I like it's kind that. Of, it's very clever. Pretty, pretty smart. Um, upgraded tuners on these as well. Uh, they're gonna be a, th a thicker cast uh, tuner plate, I guess, on these. Um, you get then, a heavier binding, too. It does yes, have that's right. a, black, a white, black, white um, binding on the sides, as well as the it top. It definitely looks much more decorative. Mm -hmm. And then the same hard shell case that you're going to get on the, the 600 series. Um, there is one series after this that we don't normally sell. We've had about four or five of them since we opened, and that's the 900 or 915. And that's going to be more of their premium. Uh, they save their prettiest uh, sugar maple on the back side, so very flame maple. It really looks gorgeous, and it only comes, I think, in a blonde finish. And honestly, they haven't been as popular as, and I think because of the price increase, they haven't been as popular as the 800 series. That's kind of the go-to for the Pro. I think once the 815V came out, Varnish, that kind of changed it, which I don't know if we covered that. The 800V, so the standard 800, uh, 815 uh, price is in at 1959 Just under $2,000 is great. to get the Varnish version or the violin varnish or uh, they call varnish. it antique varnish uh, style, you're at 2339 Again, that varnish does make a quite significant difference in the tone. It is a softer finish. It does need to be more maintained. Um, if you leave it in a hot vehicle or get it warm it gets tacky it will actually take on uh if you got that fuzz on the side of there it'll take on those shapes yep. um you can and even when you're playing it you know just your stomach sweating on it can cloud it up a little bit and it's, yeah. it's a much more finicky kind of fish and it's uh it's more difficult to put on and it's it's uh i think it enhances the tone of the instrument quite a bit so if you're willing to have that trade off i think it is a very good option i love my my varnish 815 um, but that's kind of a preference. Some people don't even like the look of it. Obviously, it only now comes in the antique varnish, which just looks like a, a more vintage instrument that has a, some wear and tear on it, some, some arm rubbing and some uh, belt buckle rash on the back. But uh, I think it's a very good option tonal-wise, and we've talked about this in other videos you can check out. But th those are the main uh, options available from Eastman at this time, time of this video. Um, I think you, it kind of runs the gamut and still keeps under $3,000, which is really impressive to to have a hand-built, hand-carved top and back, lifetime warranty, um, all these different levels for people depending on where they are in their mandolin journey. Uh, some people just dive right in, say I'm, I'm going all the way in and going for the top one. Some people start that 300 series, may never move from there or some may throughout sure. time just upgrade and, and change options, but you have a lot of different options depending on where you're at and what your needs are. Um, but I, I'm sure now that we've gone through the, the main specs, People are going to want to know what do they sound like. So what we're going to do is get Jeremy to do something very i got to take my shoes off for this. He's going to play all of these mandolins at, uh, once. at once, back to back. And uh, we're going to see how well that comes together. Jeremy, good luck as you explain and play all of the mandolin series from Eastman.
Well, John, there we have it. We've we talked about all the spec differences. We played them. We heard the differences. Um, I'd like to hear from the people anything. at home uh, what Sounds they like think of them. In. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? Uh, what do you think about the finish options? Put that in the comments below. We love to read those and kind of peruse them. Um, if you enjoyed that video, you might enjoy. We talked about the difference between A and F a little bit in this. We did a blind shootout. Can you tell the difference between an A style and an F style mandolin? And we took different levels, different brands, put them back to back, side by side. We covered them up so you can see which was which. See if you can totally hear the difference between A style and F style mandolin. And we got a link to that right now. I think you'll enjoy that. Again, they all sounded like mandolin. Well, you got a great ear, John. <laughs>